who I am is not so important. Let's talk about the data, right? That's the thing where it always starts. Um, I was really happy that this was possible again, right? After so long COVID and restrictions. One thing I missed was these little talks at the coffee machine. Hey, what are you working on? Hey, I use this package. Hey, blah, blah, blah. And I, I had a little hunger for that. So I thought maybe I can recreate maybe your appetite a little bit for those little things. So let's keep it simple. Uh, data exploration and some packages that can help you. And before I start talking about data exploration, indeed, where it all starts, the, the maybe the basics, let's first talk about the opposite of data exploration, because here I'm a little bit, uh, um, how to call it, guilty of this. More than once, I maybe went too quick on the data exploration phase and went like a, a, a maniac focusing on the accuracy or on the F1 score or what have you. And I, I actually, uh, from that moment on, completely ignored the data and only went trying to improve the score with tricks and uh, feature engineering. So, oh, you need to, some books tell you at the later chapter, grid search is the next thing to do. Uh, Hyperparameter optimization. Okay, okay. Let's let's let the computer uh, uh, calculate, and that's uh, part of the guilt. Is I think uh, for me being not, not focused on the data anymore. But I also find that a lot of books imply a little bit this kind of uh, order, right? So maybe I should go to the library and put a little A4 paper, and now explore the data between every chapter. That hopefully people won't make this mistake again. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the opposite of data exploration, like a maniac only focus on one thing and uh, try to improve it. So then I thought, what is then data exploration? Let's take this time to see again, uh, what is it? So I did the most popular PhD nowadays. It's a YouTube PhD. I will tell you how it is. You go to YouTube, you find your topic and you search and you come into a funnel and then you, you research, 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 research. This is one of the videos uh, I uh, found. It is Leo Breiman. Uh, he is more or less, or at least made it famous, the guy from the random forest, the guy of the decision trees. And also, he gets credit for um, inventing the ideas of the booster, the XG boost, boosters with a loss function. So he, I think he's a hero. I'm a fan of uh, Leo Breiman. It's a fantastic video. Uh, there's not many videos of Leo Breiman, so it's really easy to find it on YouTube, Leo Breiman, and then uh, one or two videos. Only the first five seconds is already interesting, because there Leo Breiman says something like, Lord, it's difficult to stay humble. So he was really sure of uh, what he had to say. So, uh, and then he's talking about his uh, work. He's been in academics uh, for university. Then he went in consultancy and uh, a little bit uh, an all-rounder uh, uh, with data. Well, uh, the inventor of the random forest. So he has earned a stripe, huh, right? And uh, somewhere in the video, he, he's really... Um, on the table, it's so important to get to know your data. He said, it's, that's what I learned in consultancy. You got to know your data. So that was this number one rule. So that's, uh, well, that's uh, another vote for data exploration is important. Leo Breiman didn't import Python packages. He did something else. Uh, in this case where he talks about, he had a really interesting way of data exploration. Uh, I see some friends here, so you are not allowed to talk, but can anybody guess or maybe remember what was Leo Breiman's way of data exploration? Anybody want to make a guess? Excel. What, what? Excel. Excel. Very close, you said basic, even more basic. He printed everything, the data on paper sheets, and he put his whole office full with the data and he said people can, can buy my office and they laugh so data exploration literally get a relation with the data print all the data and put his whole office full with the data uh, then he went thinking uh, about it from how can i uh, what what is special about this one how is it different uh, uh, really let's say data exploration in his head and what i liked is this was his idea as a first step for a decision tree, for a random forest. So, and I think that's my next slide. Yes. 
what I did is the right one. I got my data, a little bit data exploration, bam, I put it in the random forest. Let's see what happens, right? That's a little bit uh, what, uh, well, the, the, my, what I'm guilty of not doing enough. So the, maybe the first uh, decision tree, first random forest was actually different start a relation with your data. So that was uh, printing the whole data on your office and get a relation, get to know it, and then create features. And then he put it in the model. So that is a whole different way of uh, data exploration. And uh, I, when I rewatched it, I thought, hey, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a different way than uh, most people use a random forest, right? You put your data in it and that's it. But the first one was actually created with a lot of data exploration, literally printing the data on the wall, learn from it, create features. And then he thought a, a, a tree-based model is a good idea. All right. So before we start at take a look at data exploration, what are typical things? I think it's a little bit a creative process, right? Every data set is different. So I feel a little bit, should I give a list of what, well, that, but if you, if you uh, uh, read the books, if you read the blogs, and th these are typical things that you can find. Um, interactions and correlations. Um, note the correlation matrix, which you often see, is actually a way to say how linear related are, are these two variables? That's just a linear relation. Also got me thinking, why with so much compute power, so much techniques, we still use a little matrix that only tells the linear relation. There's so much more relations you can do, but that's a little bit uh, culture legacy, what we used to, let's see how linear related they are. In the example that I later will show, we will actually see that this causes a, no, not necessarily a problem, but that if, it's, if there's an interaction, but not necessarily linear, then just looking at the correlation matrix might give you not all the information. Problems, there's of course always problems in the data, missing values, uh, outliers or sub herbs I call them. This is not a textbook language, but maybe there's a subset in the data that should need special care, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another thing, after you made your first model, and, and uh, I, I always advise to keep it simple, your first model, let's keep it simple, easy, straightforward model. It makes some errors. It's also, of course, interesting to explore with data exploration what kind of error is my naive optimistic model making. That's another way that's really good. And another one is uh, maybe your model doesn't necessarily make an error, but where is, it not, where is it not so sure? What are the weak points of your model? And often the difference between a better model and a all right model is those data points that are a little bit tricky, a little bit difficult. So this gives maybe good ideas for uh, feature engineering and uh, th this is uh, a cup of coffee but maybe this is the number one feature engineering tool because with a cup of coffee you can walk to the experts and uh, discuss uh, hey what's what's this process behind it and uh, a cup of coffee is uh, my number one feature engineering tool but maybe the second one is uh, data exploration because from data exploration it's another great input of feature engineering one thing I noticed is that on Kaggle, you cannot have a coffee with the expert because on, in competitive data science, bam, you get the data set and that's it. You can only do data exploration. But in real life, it's much more uh, effective to have a coffee, but then the data exploration is maybe is a second good source of uh, feature engineering. And then the third one, and here it starts a little bit, do you believe in it or not? But trial and error, you can throw a computer at it. Some automatic machine learning claim they can do feature engineering automatically for you. If you believe that, you can do automated machine learning. But still, data exploration is a good way to do feature engineering. So I was there looking at my F score and then suddenly you see Oh my God, I completely forgot a interaction in my data, right? And this is exactly the feeling that I had a few times. I thought, oh, what was I doing? I completely forgot that there was uh, this or that. Uh, yeah, th this, this is uh, how I felt. Some credit to the photographer, because uh, I, I was searching for a picture like this. I thought, yeah, this, this is it. 
he actually knew what was going on, but he lives there for so many months. He has seen it. It's just as normal for him as we see some birds flying. So he didn't bother about it. But it, it's, it's, of course, the joke is that he's so obsessed with something that he completely ignores the fact what's happening behind him. And that's uh, a little bit of danger. Cool. I promise you an interactive demo, etc., etc., etc. We have 90 minutes left. So I thought, yeah, this is too ambitious to do an interactive. Are you all right? If it's just some slides about the packages, please say yes. Otherwise, I have a package. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So what I did is uh, took a standard data set, the California housing data set. Here's a little bit the, uh, the things that are in it. It's a standard sklearn data set. And I made a list of what I thought could help everybody with data exploration. And these are five packages that are suitable for data exploration. Maybe you know something, maybe don't. Uh, it's not necessarily advice, but it's fun to play with it. Also a warning, they're not always so suitable for every situation. But let's go, let's check the five packages that hopefully can make your life easier to do data exploration. This is a little bit the less in the title. Let's do less data exploration. It's not a advice to ignore data exploration, but maybe you can save time if the package can do the work that you can do. Right. Mm. I also will try to give every package a compliment, uh, right? What I like about it, but sometimes there's also things that I wish that were improved. Number one, Pandas profiling, I think almost everybody knows it, right? Yeah, Pandas Pro is, is really, really well. Uh, it's made by a Dutch guy, Simon. Before it was Belgium, so it's really close to our home. It's uh, Belgium, right? Eindhoven, pretty close. So this is uh, uh, nice that it's from uh, yeah, homemade almost. And it also is evolved a lot. It can do text, it can find keywords in text, it can find interactions now. It's uh, pre pretty well made. Also, uh, uh, I like how it's installing better. First, it was a pretty large dependency tree going fighting with the current uh, 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 NumPy. So I really like this package. Um, there is something that you can already see just from this screenshot. Here is the age of the house or the average age. And what I noticed just by scrolling is it seemed to be clipped. So the data is after 50, they say, okay, 50 and older. So let's say we didn't read, we, we were not able to read where the data come from. You see it's clipped. So 50 actually means 50 years and older because clearly this, this should be the till of all the very old houses, but it's just all clipped to 50. So maybe an MP clipped or something happened there. Another thing, maybe uh, nice because, but let's also be on the next slide. I talked about that the linear relation is not necessarily a, a interaction and there the house age and the targets, the price of the house is very re weak in linear relation. So if we just focus on this correlation matrix, we see, oh, that's, that's, that's almost nothing that's as good as random. So Pandas profiling, this is, oh yeah, the best, the best all rounder. If you can only pick one, probably this is your pick. It's the best all rounder. Uh, where I think it could be a little bit improved is in the interactions because there's a uh, interaction between each feature, let's say the target and the house age, there you, there's a little plot. Um, but there's more packages that can do that one better, so let's go to the next. Sweetvis. This is clearly the best in uh, design because wow, it almost doesn't look like it looks uh, right with a nice shadow and gradients and uh, etc. etc. <laughs> Um, it outputs to a PDF, so you, uh, when I used it, I had to uh, run it, Pff, outputs, outputs, oh sorry, not PDF, uh, HTML, that's not always uh, uh, what you want, right? Maybe you want to be output like a picture, and it's not that, that interactive, it's more or less you click all the, all the uh, yeah, features of your data set. You can tell this is my target. And here you see the, the same average uh, house age. See, here's the 50. And look, the target, which is the price, what happens. Uh, 
here what I guess would maybe slowly go up as the age increases because usually the old house is beautiful, nice windows and you expect that the, the price goes up. But actually, boing, it, it's, uh, since this still, this should surely, not only the data is clipped, the target is clipped too. So that's where we see already a problem in the data. Yeah, funny. Though. So indeed the uh, correlation is not the same as interaction because if you want to try to uh, uh, a straight line, that's not possible. That's why the, the uh, 0 0.1, the, the correlation, the R or R square, I, I forgot exactly which one it is, is pretty low, but clearly there's some interaction. So Sweetfizz is the most beautiful one, but it's not, uh, uh, in features, it's a little bit low. But to get an idea of how the target is related to your columns, it's pretty good because I like this simple plus. Dabble. Uh, that one is less well known, but I really like it. But unfortunately, it's not so actively developed anymore. One thing why I like it is uh, I see a little bit uh, older people here. Do you remember uh, the Microsoft Clippy? The interactive assistant tool that told you it looks like you're uh, writing this and this letter. Maybe you should. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of this uh, first AI interactive tool because as soon, and it's very easy to use, you see devil.plot and then your data frame and then you give your target column. I felt Clippy was talking to me again. It looks like you're doing regression. It looks like you're doing classification and then it will plot all this. Um, beautiful pictures of how, for instance, uh, categorical uh, 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 features are related to, to uh, regression to uh, a, uh, 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 how to say, to, to the target variable if it's uh, regression. This is actually not the data that I used because when I did the California housing data, it was pretty boring plots, pretty boring scatter plots. So I cheated here by taking a screenshot of the actual documentation. But if you want to see how it is on the California data set, you can uh, later take a look at my uh, GitHub. But it is really, really well in uh, these kind of picture take, take sometimes some time and it's doing everything automatically for you. Where I think it could be improved is a little bit less automatic. It picks, for instance, the 10 best interactions. And I sometimes want to see also the 11 and 12 and others. And it's, it's not that uh, much possible to customize Dabble. But still uh, uh, for getting a feeling of how your target is related to the columns in your data. It's a fantastic tool and a real time saver. Uh, day 3 this uh, another package for data exploration slash creating a model. I had the most headache with this one because you need to install graph, uh, what, how is it called? Graph Z, graph is Z. Uh, maybe you have a fight with this package because uh, if you're uh, like Keras and you want to plot a, a picture of the architecture of your network, usually it complains it cannot find this little graph. Is, yeah, you see some people nodding. That's the same that this package needs. So I was spending a good uh, 50 minutes, half an hour to get the dependencies working. I thought, oh my God, here we go again. My old friend graph is C that I need to install and uh, well, but uh, I finally managed to do it. Um, this is maybe the most creative one of all the data exploration tools, because look what it does. Uh, it makes a tree, but then for every tree, you, it plots the, with a scatter plot the data that is affected by this little branch. Really creative idea. Uh, I must be honest, I, own, I never used it in the wild on a real project, but I thought, yeah, let's mention this one. It's a, it's a funny idea that and it might, might uh, give somebody at some point insights. So what you see here is for instance, it did a split on medium income and then here uh, it decided if it's less than 5.04 and then exactly we can see that part of the data on the left and if it splits on something else, uh, average rooms or average uh, occupation, it makes another split. So you, you, get, you get an idea how your, uh, uh, how a subset of the data that this tree algorithm thinks is, is a good split to make, how it's uh, yeah, uh, interacted with, with each other. And then uh, th a 
completely different category. This is uh, interactive data exploration. Here I must give a compliment to the commercial tools. There's a lot of uh, commercial uh, data science, data exploration tools that I think is far ahead of the open source tools to do interactive data exploration. Uh, I, uh, what are a few? There's uh, Trifacta, for instance. There is uh, SPSS. There's uh, the like uh, Alter Alteric, all kind of those those commercial tools to do uh, uh, data uh, analysis, data exploration. Most most of the time, they they're ahead of the open source. But I could find some open source, and that is Detail, Detail, um, and here it's for for uh, well, given the lack that the uh, open source is at this point, I thought it was pretty good to do interactive data exploration. I didn't read the documentation, of course not. So I just installed it and tried. I, I think it, I should be able to use it. Uh, pretty pretty uh, fast, I was able to do a little. Uh, 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 filtering on one of the features and then go to plot my filtering I did on house house age smaller than 45 because I thought yeah because 50 is a special case let's focus just on the 45 uh, and then when I went to plot it was keeping my filter active and I was able to do all kinds of plots so th this was the uh, one of the better open source interactive data exploration tools I could find uh, not that well known. I don't hear it uh, a lot. It has some background with, oh, I should stand on the cross. It has some background with uh, SAS. So this is the uh, interactive uh, data exploration tool. Warning, it will expose itself as a website. And I which port did I need to open? And then I found 40,000. I said, what, 40,000? This is a high port uh, to open, but you need to expose port 40,000 then detail will express itself as a website and there I think it's a react something website you can do interactive uh, data exploration so pretty pretty high port I remember it from uh, spyware malware etc but uh, 40,000 is what detail needs to uh, give you a, a nice web interface to plot with the data yeah. so these are the five uh, uh, packages what I hope uh, that uh, everybody uh, will realize is that almost in every point where you do your data exploration, making a model, improving your model, I think at every point we have the choice to either go for a, a, a grid search or something else, right? It's sometimes indeed it helps, but everybody always has the right to go back to data exploration. So at even after your first model, go back to data exploration, see the errors. It's, uh, there's, there's a lot of I learned uh, by doing this way. Also, this is the way I tell myself, the other way around, uh, I need to create my first model and data exploration as a right to try the more complicated models. So um, I see, for instance, XGBoost as a little bit more complicated model. So I'm, I'm not allowed maybe to use it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not that strict for myself, by the way, but let's, let's call it to make it a little bit more blunt. I'm not allowed to use XGBoost the first way. First, I need to earn my rights to do a little bit data exploration, see where the simple model make their errors, uh, etc. cetera. Um, oh yeah, before I forgot, uh, I wanted to tell this in the beginning, but uh, it can also be at the end. In the news now, there's uh, a lot of fuss about Andrew Ng's new company. And maybe you've seen it in the blogs, in your Twitter feed. Andrew Ng uh, had a new idea and poof, he had, uh, I think, 56 million for his startup. So uh, Andrew Ng had another idea. He's uh, maybe most famous for his machine learning course on Coursera that I think everybody uh, uh, likes, loves, or maybe did. He's also famous for his second thing he did, deeplearning.ai. And if you want to know more about uh, deep learning architectures, etc., etc., you can uh, do his. So what was his latest tech startup? It's going back to the data. His newest idea of uh, improving your model is going back to the data and improve the labels, improve the quality. Uh, and that is his latest startup. So I thought that's fun to note. 
Uh, timing couldn't be better for me. Another vote for uh, data exploration is important. So uh, yeah, that's, with that I would like to end my talk and uh, hopefully get you some ideas to do data exploration. Awesome. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? You can raise your hand. Okay, I'll bring the mic to you. Hi, uh, do you have any uh, suggestions for how to deal with large data sets? This works for smaller data sets other than just taking some random sample maybe? Yeah, I was a little bit afraid of that uh, question. <laughs> um, um, that's a really good point because uh, uh, this is all cute and nice and then uh, the real deal, right? Then you have a serious data set. Uh, that was a little bit my uh, note in the beginning of uh, they're not all that suitable for real work. Uh, I guess these are almost not all suitable for uh, real work, work. And I guess that if the data gets bigger and bigger and bigger, usually your options get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, I haven't uh, tested them uh, w when I scaled data up since. Uh, not sure, but I, I'm not sure about Pandas profiling, but I d didn't see any scalable backend for any of them. I think it's all, yeah. Put it all in the memory and I will take care of it. And that's actually your question. Yeah, but that's not always possible. Yeah, completely agree. So maybe to uh, get a little bit idea of your sample and then I'm unfortunately have to tell you and now you need to do it in your uh, parallel uh, <laughs> platform. Yeah, but good point, yeah. Any other questions? Um, do you have any suggestions for uh, something like exploration tracking? In the grid search, you have uh, experiment tracking, and that works very well when you have like a clear structure in which you, you are trying to see all the options. But when you're doing EDA, it feels a lot more like, oh, I've noticed this little thing, I noticed this little thing, I lost this little thing, and it doesn't fit in a very nice structure of experiment tracking. You can log this, but then the next experiment, you see something else. Yeah. Um, so, then the first idea is it can be structured, right? Then we have to first agree that data exploration can be structured, that there is a structured way to do it. I'm not so sure if that's possible because uh, sometimes, uh, um, yeah, l l l like maybe on, on Kaggle where the data set is fixed, the problem is fixed, the goal is fixed, in reality, maybe the data is not so fixed. You find something out, you go back, and uh, it gets a little bit uh, right. And and I don't know about your experience, but with experiment tracker, I'm uh, uh, d don't ask me about my past experiments because I didn't do them. I know that there exist tools like MLflow, but uh, I I haven't always tracked them down. Uh, my experiments tracking is usually with a sheet of paper and a pencil, and then I know, and it throws away. So if it can be, I, I don't know. But this is this is an interesting question because, uh, but if it can be structured, maybe there can be a tool. But I'm I'm a little bit thinking about uh, the structure that could be projected on data exploration because maybe it is a creative process and and shouldn't be captured anyway. Because if it if it could be, then a little bit of the creativity goes away. Is that, that a little bit, uh, yeah, that's maybe, that's yeah, yeah, that's probably my answer, yeah. I'll take one quick question and then we go on a break because we are already running a little behind, so sorry. Is there any uh, more question? Yeah. Thanks for your talk. Uh, just wondering, do you think it should be a separate role in a team uh, for ones doing exploration and- Oh, the, the data explorer. Um, uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, um, one thing is for sure, I think the blog writers would love this because uh, there's uh, every few months there's another, they're, they're, we're missing the important role, the data explorer. Uh, so for marketing per purpose, I say yes, that's good. Then we have more work, more uh, roles to fit. Uh, in, in reality, I, I really feel it's uh, so important for the one that created model, the one that prepared data. So m maybe the ideal world is everybody in the same uh, room and uh, explore the data and uh, have a laugh and see what you do uh, a little bit more creative. So, so uh, again, by, by the structure, uh, the, the creativity, the idea sharing goes a little bit away by, by giving somebody an isolated role. But for the blocks, it's a good idea. So still a good idea for, uh, for the marketers, yeah. <laughs>